Southwest. You are in the land of the lone prairie, where the coyotes howl and the winds blow free. <laughs> Don't smell no different here to me than do back home. There must be something wrong with your smellers. But here everything is different. The trees are different. The people are different. The houses are different. But do you know they got cows out here that don't give no milk? There's rivers out here that ain't got no water in them? And there's men out here that can ride anything with hair on it. Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. And out here, a man's a man, and the women are glad of it. But listen, New, have you got any objection to telling me where we are going? Not at all, Mr. Jones, not at all. Mr. Jones, we are now following the advice of one of the finest men in America, Mr. Horace Greeley. Mr. Greeley said... Go west, young man, and do your best. Then come back east and spend your grease. Say, how come I couldn't go back east and get my grease and come back south and hush my mouth? Boy, you are so dumb until you think Veronica Lake is some kind of a summer resort. Now, that's new. Ain't no use you get mad, because you know I was just joking. You know I know you got plenty of sense. Why, if it wasn't for your sense, we'd both be spending 11 months and 29 days in the pea patch back in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, wouldn't we? Well, uh... <laughs> sure we would. And here you come getting mad every time I say anything. Oh, July, you know I wasn't mad at you. I was thinking, that's all. And I was getting, I get to thinking real hard. I get sort of ugly in the face, you know. Well, anybody can see you a hard thinker just by looking at you. What was that? I said, I, I'm doing some hard thinking myself. Oh. In fact, I'm doing some pretty hard thinking right now. What are you thinking so hard about? And I was thinking that we could take that two bits you got and buy some sardines and crackers. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I don't think we ought to go cold in hand for no sardines and crackers. And owing to the fact that that two bits we got is the last button on Gable's coat, it might be a good idea. I know, but owing to the fact we ain't greased our gum since way yesterday morning, can you think of a better way to spend that last quarter? I don't know. You have to give me time to think. Wait a minute. How do you do, young man? How do you do, sir? Nice day, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice day. Very nice day. Uh, my name is Whitney. Uh, uh, Vanderbilt Whitney. And yours? My name is Jefferson. Jefferson Lee. Glad to know you, Mr. Whitney. Oh, and I'm glad to know you, too, Mr. Lee. Yes, very glad to know you. <laughs> you know, it makes me very proud to see a young man like you in business. It certainly does. <laughs> you know, when I saw you over here, I told my contemporary, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Green over there, I said, now there's a young man in the business that's going places. But I only work here. And uh, when I said that, you said which? I only work here. You mean uh, you don't own this business? That's right. Oh. Uh, the proprietor is not in just now, but maybe I can help you. Well, Sonny... The only way you can help me is to direct me and my friend over here where we can get a room. Well, now, let me see. 
Uh, money is no... We just got in town, and what we need is nothing, anything else. There's a place uh, I need, too, but it must be not. You might be able to room down to my girlfriend and board and a spell. Ah, now, if you just... For the address? No, the name. Oh, I almost forgot about that. I think I got a quarter right here in my pocket. I don't like to break big bills no, just to get a quarter. <laughs> we got plenty of change. Oh, oh but... Uh... <laughs> Here it is. Thank you. I'll see you later. Good day, sir. What may ho? At ease. Machine gun company, our present, our card is for. Still fighting World War One. Mo, I was just dreaming. That's all. Yes, I know you was dreaming. That's all you ever do is dream. It's a good thing you wasn't in World War Two. You'd dream yourself to death. Everybody else that didn't go got four F. You got four F and a G. I don't know what the G was for. This it was for good for nothing, Samuel Holliday. That name fits you to a T. You've been on a holiday ever since the 11th day of November, 1918. But if you don't get out here and get you a job, I'm going to give you back your rib and get me another atom before it's too late. Here, take this dollar. Go out to the store and get me some meat for supper. All right, Mo. Better go to that pool hall, either. If you do, I'm coming down there and get you. I'll be right back, Mo. Oh, Mother, it's beautiful. I'm glad you like it, honey. I love it. It's darling. You know, honey, do I'm glad it's you in the beauty contest instead of Florida. Oh, Mother, Florida's all right. Well, I know, but Florida isn't like you or me either. Florida's just like old no good daddy. Florida doesn't care for beauty contests and lectures and debates of the higher things in life, like you do. All she ever thinks about is men and more men. But, Mother dear, I'm sure she'll come to the beauty show tonight. Don't you think she will? No, and besides, she'd be jealous because you'll be the prettiest girl in the show. And you're going to win a prize, too. I just love to win a prize, any kind of a prize. You will, honey. And me and your old no good father will be proud of you, too. Mother, don't let father go to Susan McKayla and ask him to wear his Sunday suit, won't you? Honey, I don't ask your father anything. I tell you. Bob with the flowers, maybe. I'll go and see. I'll be right back for it. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Uh, may we come in? What you selling? Oh, we're not salesmen, madam. We are gentlemen of the first order. <laughs> my name is Whitney, Mr. Vanderbilt Whitney. And this is my contemporary, Mr. Green. Well, you may as well come in. After you, Mr. Green. Ah, oh, Mrs. Holliday, I presume? Yes, I was bragging about it. Oh, uh, you know, a young man named Jefferson told us that you might have a spare room and uh, that we might occupy it. Yes, I know Jefferson very well. And uh, I do have a spare room. But I've, I've never had room before. 
And I really wouldn't know what to charge you for your room in advance. Well, madam, you need not worry about that. Well, well Jarvis will be over here tonight after supper. He's taking my daughter to the theater. Ah, the theater. The very mention of the name warms the cockles of my heart. Yes. Are you a gentleman for the theater? Are you actors? Actors? Oh, madam. The word actors is a vulgar name for our chosen profession. We are thespians. We are the backbone of the theater. Then perhaps you'll give my daughter a few lessons before she goes to the theater tonight. She's pretty enough to win, I know. But you see, she's never been on the stage before. And if you could only show her how to act. Uh, Mr. Whitney, I... Well, now, Mrs. Holliday, the gods of luck have frowned most favorably upon you this day. Watch this. You there, slavey, go into the palace and tell Caesar I'm here. Tell him I come not to praise him. And if he don't send my wife home to cook my supper, I will slay him. At two, Brutu. Avast, be gone. Ah, oh, there you are, my sweet. I waited for long without you. Come, let us go and prepare the feast. How was that? Oh, Mr. Whitney, that was simply grand. If you could only show my daughter how to act like that, why, I would give you and Mr. Green a room here in my home as long as you want it, for free. I would just to go upstairs and rest a while before supper. I just sent Papa to the store to get some meat. If it isn't enough, I'll send it back so you can have plenty. This way, please. Oh, uh, Mrs. Holliday, we wouldn't think of imposing on your hospitality. We had really just made a gift, ma'am. We really are. I'll wait. What you doing? Now, this hand is really contributory. I guess you better hit me. Struck me. Uh-oh. What's it out? Well, Pops, I've got to go now. I'll see you at the theater tonight. All right, hi. girl like you ain't got no business going to seas in a town like this. You're too pretty. Honey, you need to go to swell places and meet fine people. I'd like to take you to Chicago. And I mean tonight. Sugar, what do you say? Gee, darling, I'd like to go. But that old lady of mine, well, she just died. She just wouldn't let me go. Well, I'm not worried about her. What about your old man? Oh, Papa, he never has anything to say about what I do or where I go. It's the old lady. She's the hell pit. Every time I go home, she starts nagging at me. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Why haven't you been home sooner? Well, I'm just sick and tired of all of this. I don't blame you, kid. By the way, I was reading about Honey Dew's going to be in a beauty contest tonight at the theater. I hope she wins. Oh, she hasn't got a chance. Everybody tells her she's pretty and it's just gone to her head. Oh, come, Florida, don't be like that. Why, she... Oh, Johnny, let's talk about me. Okay, baby, let's talk about her. 
Yes, let's talk about it. Hey, Johnny, you're running on the telephone. Okay. Excuse me, babe. I'll be right back. I wonder what's keeping Sam. And Florida, too. She should have been here over an hour ago. Oh, Mother, you know how Father is. He's slow as molasses in January. And Florida, she's probably off somewhere window shopping. You know what Aunt Mary said about it. She has a champagne mine and a beer pocketbook. Yes, I know. Florida and your father are two chips off the same block. <laughs> you know, honey, the law must send us with Mr. Green here. And I'm so glad. Yes, Mother, but I thought you said the Johnson sent them. Yes, I know. But you see, honey, no matter what we do, whether it's good or bad, the good Lord has something to do with it. And those two gentlemen upstairs, they are big men. They're from Hollywood. They're actors. Uh, uh, lesbians or something like that. They're arresting now. But you'll have a chance to meet them at supper tonight. And I'm sure they'll be a great help to you. Mr. Whitney's going to show you how to act on the stage tonight. Oh, Mother, that would be grand. I can hardly wait. I've finished with the dishes, Mother. Is there anything else you want me to do? No, honey. You go upstairs and fix your nails. I'll make Florida help them when she comes in. All right. Say, hey, Lou, how come you change our name? Had to. You heard me tell the lady we were from Hollywood, didn't you? Sure I did, bud. Well, Hollywood's a big place. And folks from there has got to have a big name. Well, suppose we meet somebody else from Memphis. Well, in that case, you just plain old July Jones. And I'm Bad News Johnson. And maybe in jail if whoever we meet happen to be a policeman. Sure, give yourself a big name. Huh? Mr. Vanderbilt Whitney. What's wrong about that? Oh, nothing. I just wonder why you give yourself such a big name and just call me plain Mr. Green. That's all I could think of at the time. I left the other name for you to figure out. Something you like. The only thing I like with green is cornbread. 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 Cornbread green. <laughs> That's a good name. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't never heard of nobody on the stage with a name like that. Well, what about butter beans and Susie? Sparrows and ham bone. Simpson and dry bread Thomas. What about them, huh? I forgot about them. After supper, I reckon we all gonna give us a shoe shine. We going to the theater tonight. What are we going to use for money? Didn't the lady say she had two free passes we could use? Yeah, but what I'm talking about, what are we going to use for money to pay for shoe shines with? You got a quarter, ain't we? We had a quarter. So how come we ain't got it now? I spent it, that's how come. You spent it for what? This magazine. You mean to tell me you spent our last money for a magazine? Do you know what kind of book this is, Mr. Jones? Uh, I mean, Mr. Green. I know it ain't good to eat. I know that. I know. But it tells you what to do so you can eat and regular too. How? Well, when was you born and why? All I knew I was born in me. All right. From someone near you, go to work. That's you. <laughs> what do it say about you? All right. Here it is. Listen to this. This is a day of rest. Use it for that purpose. Be lazy. Relax. Let your imagination run riot, but don't take it seriously, especially when it comes to work. If you're tired, sleep late. Don't worry. That's me. Yeah. A lot different between May and December, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Is you thinking about the same thing I'm thinking about? Yeah. Wonder what she gonna have for supper. I don't care what it is, just so there's enough of it. That's all I wanna know. 
And I hope it's chicken. I didn't get it, Mama. And just why? I didn't. You see, Louis was just like this when I got to the butcher mark door. You see down there, old lady was standing up there. Was old enough for somebody's grandma, and the poor old lady was crying. And you see, Lou, it was just like this here. I asked the old lady. I said, Look, old lady, what is the matter with you? She said she ain't got no money to get no some tea, and she said she was hungry. Had twelve little starving children, and I just my heart went to her heart just like this, bumpity bump bump bump. Yeah, you see, it's like this here, Mama Lou. The poor old lady was standing up there at the store there. And I come out the store and the poor old lady had all them little starving children. And herself, she was just hungry. I stuck my hand in my pocket, hand the old lady money. I said, hell, lady, take this money and go buy you some tea. And the poor old lady started down the railroad track. When she got on the track, a train started down the track. The train started blowing. The poor old lady didn't move. And after a while, the train blew. And the poor old lady didn't move. <laughs> And after a while, the train run right into the poor old lady and hit the old lady. <laughs> then what? The poor old lady moved. And you took my money I gave you to go buy me for supper and give it to her? Yes, Mama. <laughs> oh. I hope you don't have no roast pork for dinner. The Bible says the split animal ain't man to eat. Coat comes from a hog. And a hog's hoof is split wide open, all four of them. Yeah, but look, I was weaned on pork. And look at me now. <laughs> the Bible is right. <laughs> What was it? A closed shave. For who? For us. The old man lost the supper money playing blackjack. Well, do we? Yeah. Six thirty. Regular time or daylight saving time? What difference does it make? About two hours. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Oh, now, baby, don't be like that. I'll be home tonight for sure, but I'll be a bit late. The boy's gonna have a little game in the back room tonight, and I have to stay there to get my cuts. That's it, boy. Ain't that game don't have no skirt on. <laughs> okay, baby. What took you so long, Johnny? 
business, honey. That was my beer, man. Well, you stayed so long till I'm going to have to go. Chicago still holds good. Thank it over. Okay, and I'll call you tonight if I get a chance. Bye. Bye, dear. And I just stumbled and fell. That's all. What against Mars rolling fear? <laughs> <laughs> Florida, Mother's been wondering where you were. I wish she'd mind her own business and let me alone. I've got my own life to live and I intend to live it. Oh, don't be angry with me. I was only trying to tell you what Mother said. Well, you're just a kid. You don't know. I hope you come to the theater tonight and hope for me. Oh, honey, do that kid stuff. I've got more important things in my life. I'm going to Chicago. Florida, is that you out there? Now, I want you all to act like human beings, especially you, Sam. Mr. Whitney will sit here, and Mr. Green will sit here. Now, I'll go and call them. I know you gentlemen are half starved by now. We sure will. Oh, no, Mrs. Holliday. It isn't that bad, but uh, we could eat. Well, it's ready. Right here, Mr. Whitney. And right here, Mr. Green. Mr. Whitney. This is Mr. Whitney, Mr. Vanderbilt Whitney. We're glad to know you, Mr. Whitney. Uh, the pleasure is mutual, I'm sure. <laughs> and this is Mr. Green. We're also glad to know you, Mr. Green. Me too. By the way, Mr. Green, I didn't get your first name, though. Colonel Green. <laughs> How very odd. Is that your real name? Uh, uh, no, miss. <laughs> uh, you see, that's his stage name. Uh, his real name is... Uh, 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 very, uh, Mr. Very Green, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, this is my little daughter, Melody. Ah, very cute. She's very cute. <laughs> yeah. And this is Barbara. We call her Honeydew. My, but she's sweet. Oh, really? And this is Florida. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know, when I look at you, it makes me feel that I was born 30 years too soon. Well, you was, wasn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Mr. Holiday, Mr. Samuel Holiday. We all call him Papa, but the boy down to the pool hall calls him Old Sam. Oh, Mr. Holiday, you are really a lucky man to have such a fine family as this. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he is, but we ain't. Now, if you won't sit down, I'll bring you food. Say, look here, Whitney, you know one thing? In my younger days, I used to be one of the greatest on the public stage in America. Is that so? I worked with some of the leading shows. I even down worked with the Yellow Boys. I know that's a show that you never heard talk of. Because the Yellow Boys was here before the Black Boys were. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah. Uh -huh. I bet Pop still be his life. When I was 14 years old, I was with a little show once, played every time, south for the Mason Dixie line. <laughs> oh, hush, Sam. The only show you was ever with a medicine show. And you're still taking the pills that they paid you off with. <laughs> so far, Mr. Green, Mr. Whitney's been doing all the talking. May I suggest that you give thanks? Thank you, lady. And if we're able, we're going to eat everything that's on this table. And if there's any left, in the pot. Bring it now while it's good in the pot. May we bow our heads. Gracious Lord, 
We thank thee this day for the food we are about to receive, for the nourishment of our bodies. Please forgive our sins and accept our thanks for these blessings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. May I never be put to confusion. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Jesus wept. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. I thank the Lord for this meal and some more meal. Amen. Oh, just a Mr. Green. I think the host will serve the place. Well, that's all right, Mr. Whitney. We can dispense with formalities. showing her to do how to work on the face tonight. Go right over and have a seat and wait. Now, Mrs. Holliday, your daughter is just about ready to go down and win that first prize. I hope so, Mr. Whitney. She will. She will. <laughs> Honey, here's your flowers, and here's your bag. Come on, Papa, with the dress. You didn't forget your shoes, did you, darling? No, Mother, they're in the bag. Here, son, here's a beautiful dress. Be sure to take care. It costs plenty of money now. Come on, children, let's go before you be late. Son, be sure to take care now. And don't forget, let me put your toes in, darling, here. Come on, Papa, let's go get dressed. I know one of you going to win that out there, ain't it? <laughs> ain't no use you come tell me about etiquette and all that stuff. I was hungry. Yeah, but you didn't have to sit up in that chair and go to sleep, now, did you? No. You didn't have to tell them folks we was going to stand to dress, either. Because the only thing you can change is a pair of socks. And you can't do that but one. And if you could button up that coat you got on, your trunk would be completely locked. Yeah, I sort of messed up that time, didn't I? You sure did. And one of these days, you're going to find out that a man only got two eyes, two ears, two hands, and two feet, and only one mouth, which means he should see, hear, wait, and walk. Twice as much as he told. And eat. Did you call Mr. Whitney and Mr. Green? By the way, they said they'll be right down, Lou. Ah, uh, Lou, how do I look? Like a bale of cotton with the middle band busted off of it. By the way, I thought you fellas were going to make a change. Oh, now come, Holiday. You know better than that. You're an old-timer. I'm your house guest, you know. 
And on the first night, the house guest never changes. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. <laughs> you forget your head wasn't hung on your body. Come on, let's go. John, this is Flora. Yeah. Look, I finally decided to take you up on that Chicago trip. Okay, babe, but where are the folks? Oh, the folks, they are all gone now. All right. Come on over, but don't bring too many things. I'll buy anything you want when you get to Chicago. Okay, I'll only bring a small bag. All right. Well, okay. See you later. Bye now. Hey, Jackson. Floyd will be in in a few minutes. And if I happen to hand you a lie in a jar uh, about going to Chicago and taking care of things while I'm gone, I want you to eat it up, you hear? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Tonight is a very great night in the history of our city. Tonight, for the first time, we're going to have a beauty parade. But the judges are amazed and in confusion. There's too much beauty. And for that reason, you have a part to play. And you, your applause shall determine the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, for a moment, I see a quiet village street, a crowded city square, a dark, suspenseful theater, and then suddenly out of nowhere comes Paul and the stars born. Tonight, as you applaud, you shall choose a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you're excited, so am I. I came by plain, plain old butt. For that reason, I'm going to ask the maestro for music. And let's bring them on. What do you think? <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, the moment for which we've all waited so patiently, the decision of the... Are you ready, gentlemen? Third prize, number five, Miss Lily Mae Mill. <laughs> second prize, second prize, Miss Juanita Spencer, number three. Step forward, please. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the final winner, number one, the Rage Tomorrow and Choice of Hollywood and Broadway, Miss Barbara Holiday, our own little honeydew. <laughs> Well, I did, too. Oh, they went home to get ready to serve the lemonade and the cake. And also, Mama told me to bring you home with her when you got dressed. Well, all right. Say, did you say lemonade? I said lemonade and cake. Mama got a big a pitcher of lemonade down there that tall and a cake that big, and you ought to see it. <laughs> well, that's no treat for a girl just won a beauty contest. Let's go over and get a little. Yes, but I can't stay long, though. But I weep. Let's go outside until she gets dressed. A special dance number by Red Calhoun and the Boyle. Turn them loose, Gates.
All right, folks, don't go away. Red and the boys just taking a breathing spell. They'll be back. There'll be more music and dancing. Hey, Johnny, isn't it about time that we were leaving to go to the station? Oh, take it easy, please. Uh, the train don't leave until midnight. Why hurry? We still have a plenty of time. Okay, if you say so. What's the matter, babe? What do you think, Matt? She's your sister, isn't she? Sure, she's my sister, but what are you trying to do? Oh, don't be like that, babe. The kid's easy to look at. I'd like to meet her. Well, there'll be plenty of time for that after we're married. But I wonder what she's doing here. No, thank you. Yes, sir. Sister Whitney, I would. I never should let over no good Sam out of my sight. No telling why he's taking honeydew. In Florida, she's gone too. I told her to stay home anyhow. Every time my back is turned, she leaves this house. She is bait for no good. Oh, now, 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 Mrs. Holliday. Uh, take it easy. The girl's all right. Uh, but uh, I suggest that uh, uh, me and Mr. Green here go out and see if we can find them. I think I know where I might uh, locate them. Uh, uh, Mr. Green. Mr. Green. Uh, we'll find them, Mrs. Holliday. You just take it easy. We'll be right back and get some of that good old lemonade and cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, son, you know one thing. I know that honey dew was going to win that contest. One thing about it, look at her. She's beautiful. She's taking after the old man. Anything the old man do, he will do with it. <laughs> son, you know once I was in show business myself. Why? Were you in show business? Yes, I was in show business. When I danced, couldn't nobody hold me a light. <laughs> Like for me. Johnny, you know there's something funny going on around here. If only a miracle could keep Papa and Honey do both out of Mama's sight at one and the same time. Well, maybe they'll celebrate. I just heard your old man say that Honey do won the first prize in the beauty contest. Huh? That is a miracle. But I'm afraid it won't be a happy ending. We'd better get out of here. Okay, I'll go over and start a conversation, and you slip by to the ladies' room and get your thing. Okay. <laughs> well, how are you folks down? Fine, 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 fine. If anything y'all need, is just call me. Yeah, I will. I want to see that you get on fine. Are you enjoying yourself, baby? No, I don't like this place. Well, if you don't like the joint, you'll go somewhere else. Oh, well, I must go. Mother will be serious. Now, listen, sweetheart. You just begin to live. You should go to new places. See new people. I can take you all those places. Wait right here. I'll get your partner when you leave. <laughs> Honey, do your mother's worried about you in the Florida too. I just saw Miss Florida going in that restroom over there. Are you sure, Miss Florida? I didn't know she was here. Oh yes, ma'am, it's all right, and she's still in there too. She sure is. That room right there. 
And you ought to go in there and tell her too. she was, and you too. I've been almost crazy. You tell your old no-count dad I said to keep Flora there till I get there. Do you understand? Stay there till I get there. Jefferson, you stay here and watch this house till I get back. I got what to do. Yes, yes ma'am. Excuse me, Miss Florida, but, uh... What do you want, funny face, and what are you doing here anyway? Well, uh, I'd just like to have a word or two with you. Well, I haven't got time to be bothered with you now. Uh, yes, but you see, I got a message for you from your dear mother. Don't you dear mother me. I don't want to hear anything that you have to say or she has to say either. Anyway, I'm going to talk with Johnny. Come on, Johnny, let's go. Okay, boys, I'll see you later. Yeah, but for something like you, like a phone to trust one eye. 